fossils from the mesal site. Here is the mesal site. You can see this shale is easily broken with, with a steak knife. You can wedge the steak knife in and break the shale. And in the breaking of these layers, you will find fossils. This technician is embedding the fossil. So this process is a crucial process to the display of a fossil, but manipulation can take place before this is displayed. Here is another creature found at the same pit, another 49 million year old rodent. And here we have a resin preserved boa constrictor. I mean, this is a snake which is exactly the same snake skeleton we have today. These turtles were making babies and they were rapidly buried. They didn't have time to walk away from each other. They died rapidly. Notice the crushing of their shells. I don't, I, it can't get any clearer than this, people. Their shells have been crushed flat. This was removed from the mesal pit, from the oil shale, and encased in resin mix. Okay, so manipulation can happen here. We can eliminate things, move things around. Um, there is a very real possibility of sleight of hand if you wanted to display a certain type of uh, creature. Uh, you can eliminate certain vertebrae, you can eliminate certain bones. Ida has been manipulated. There's no doubt in my mind about that. Here we have a a picture that I found on the internet uh, concerning the two plates. Now, back in 1983, an amateur uh, fossil finder got a hold of this fossil and made a, a resin cast out of it. And this cast has been always broken in two pieces. You had a bottom portion and a top portion. Now, this is the iconic Ida that we see all over the internet. But this is a resin cast. Okay, and I want you to see uh, another revised cast over here. And, and, and notice that there's something odd about this revised Ida. And they're the same. They're, I mean, there's portions of it uh, exactly the same. But this particular one is revised. It, here's the break point. We have the break point there. You can see it. And then we have a dotted line break point here. Revised B is different than... Plate A. Notice thumb, toe, to the digit on this hand here, the size. We'll move it over and we see that we don't have a lineup. So we have a thumb here and a finger here and we have a huge gap. Either they've added a vertebrae in here or something. But this is another form of high manipulation and most people don't pick up on this. One of the things that makes Ida supposedly a transitional creature is that she's missing the tooth comb. Her skull has been crushed. Her teeth, right and left, are smashed together. Where is the tooth comb? Well, you, you have to use your imagination. And if the so-called experts tell us that the tooth comb is missing, or it's non-existent, then we have to believe them because they're wearing the white lab coats. Now, <laughs> this is fascinating. You would think if the tooth comb is that important, you would have an x-ray with this exposing more of the tooth comb. But what we have is a crushed skull with the teeth left and right meeting each other because of the crushing. And we can easily assume that there still is a tooth comb here, which keeps this creature in the lemur family. Here's a classic example of how evolutionists will deceive their audience by doing a comparison like this. You have the human foot and Ida's foot. You recognize this iconic foot now, I'm sure, but they're not the same size. We blow, what's happened here is the evolutionist has blown up this foot and put it next to a artist's rendering of a human foot to give you the illusion that they're the same size. When in fact, we know that Ida's foot is 
very tiny. Here we have an x-ray of a human foot. This is the size of approximately Ida. This is a Leatherman. This is about the size of Ida's foot. About five centimeters. This is my foot. So we have Ida's foot next to my foot. The human foot is designed to bear loads. Ida's foot is not designed to bear any load at all. Very little heel here. Large heel, load-bearing heel, small heel. The experts tell us that the link between Ida and man is the talus bone. The talus bone is the key that brings these two creatures together and declares that they are related. If you look closely, you'll see that the talus bone on this model is embedded in the tibia. It is like a pea bedded in the tibia. According to this, this would be unfunctional. Now, I'm not saying that Ida doesn't have a talus bone, but having a talus bone doesn't necessarily mean that they're related. They have bones, man and beast. This means we have a common designer. That's what it means. It doesn't mean we have a common descent. It means common designer. If you look at a snake skeleton today, and you look at this mesal pit fossil, you will find that they are exactly the same. There is no difference. There's no little tootsies, no feet. This snake, found in the same pit, supposedly not 49 million years old, found next to Ida, or near in the same area. Now here's the real kicker. This is a 49 million year old fossil of a monkey's hand. Now according to the experts, Ida was 47 million years old. And here we have a 49 million year old monkey's hand. Ida was buried 47 million years ago. She is a direct relative of man. It's supposed to be, according to the experts, she's a direct link to man. First Ida, this lemur-like creature, which is supposedly not a lemur, because it has a few things like uh, a talus bone and missing tooth comb. So this is a direct link. Then we have lemurs, then we have monkeys, then we have ape, and then we have man. The problem is, the monkey hand was found in the same pit, people. The monkey hand was found in the same pit. The monkey hand is 49 million years old. Ida, 47 million years old. But they're found in the same pit. In the same pit. When you find bugs, snakes, turtles. Here's a little birdie. Here's a bug, a beetle. And you can see even some of the color has been preserved here. Something as tender and delicate as a beetle to be displayed in this form can only be explained logically through rapid burial in the same pit they're all dying at the same time. And if they're dying at the same time, in the same pit, then it is rapid burial, and that lines up more logically with the biblical flood. Also, another point I'd like to point out that nobody has talked about, the fact that Ida has a monkey's tail, like a monkey just like a lemur. But how does this fit into the evolutionary schema? I thought we, homo sapiens, lost our tails, right? And we shouldn't have tails like this. And by the way, it's problematic when you look at Ida as a transitionary creature, where's the other transitions losing the tail? So we'd have a little less, a little less, a little less, not this snap, all of a sudden no more tail. 
You can't explain that without providing more and more and more and more transitional creatures. And this is where we find it impossible and improbable. You have to have a pro proliferation of transitional creatures to make this so. That's why creationists shake their head and say, no, it's unlikely that we descended from monkeys or apes. So I await your response and how you wiggle your way out of these problematic findings. Until next time. A monkey hand found in the same pit?